Don is a blessing, my nigga. One up production. One up production, nigga. Always keep that motherfucker. No face affiliation. See, now if you niggas knew me, man, you you niggas love me, nigga. Gotta be good ones who do. They already know what the fuck it is, nigga. Always that way. Life buffs glossy. One glance could be costly. Medusa's turn you to stone. Mine will leave you frosty, cold inside. So you can feel the pain coming from windows left open. Releasing the same, our streets are drained. Only teddy bears remain. Cemeteries packed, just like that prison cage. I've been through mazes. Shoot out some mazes. And push, literally from the bushes they spray from. Came back and case something. Damn, they ain't budging. Caught a hole on my right side. I had to wake something. See too much, way too much, but soak it up like sponge. Never knew that prison must be where I had a my function. Four more bars of my punches. And truth to be told, pupils bent off from cottage growth to you know. know. So how in the fuck would you know? What my life is, I'm going mad like who's Cujo. The story behind my eyelids. If you look into my eyes, you see me inside do another episode of coffee and cannabis it's your boy tommy g make sure you like and subscribe man i bring important issues concerning you know prison reform you see you got right there reform bad laws you know, bring awareness concerning prison situations things i've been through things other people been through i got a couple guests here today Lady T in the house. Good and morning. also, yeah, she said good morning. I heard that voice. All nice and sexy. Good and we got my man T Rex over here. What you know, up? We saying what up? That's him. You know, he, 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 he's, he's a French white guy. You know? <laughs> That's an incredible name. Like, I really messed me up. Though. I just found out his last name. Real, I, I know. I, I call him something else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What did I say? Sacre bleu. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I ran across something today concerning the mind state of people like me, bro. That's like me. I got, I'm protected, and I know that. I was able to make up, make it about that situation. Very, very. Slam, bro. This is like it's a thin line. Like I said, I call it eight, ten extra. That was just me getting angrier and angrier, and that was the like the the disorganization of the place we were in. You know, you can't do that. You can't. You can't just throw a a, a wild dog into into an environment, man, where there's other wild dogs. And unfamiliar animals, like, and we just sitting up here just wondering about each other. Then it's going, then it's clashes. You know, this best metaphorical sense I can put it in. But also, it was you know, we human beings, so mistreatment is no excuse. People do that based on their own beliefs and upbringing. It's just facts. People join gangs because what's going on in the home and what's going on in the area. People join prison gangs because they may be afraid or they just want to blend in. If there's another another agenda behind want to join a gang or whatever, I I guess you can tell me that stuff come when you're kids. You know, you don't come when you're a grown ass man. You know, making a better and more rash decision. That's just real. But anyway, I just wanted to talk about the mind state and show y'all the mind state of those individuals that was, you know, that is going through what 
I went through and what I'm going through. So just give me a minute. I'm going to get it set up for y'all and we're going to jump right into it. That's the second. Life sentences. Kearns says his time at ADX exacerbated his mental illnesses. I got borderline personality disorder, schizoaffective disorder, a cyclical mood disorder, bipolar, antisocial personality disorder. Since 2015, there were at least three other cases where prisoners released from ADX committed serious crimes. We spoke with 11 former inmates. Some are living happy and productive lives. Others say their time in Supermax made them even more aggressive. It just made me angry, real angry, that I was locked down like that and isolated like that. Y'all see what I mean? That's crazy. And I fought it. It don't mean everybody else can, bro. You know, he's sitting there. He's, man, bro, you in the cell that's the size of a bathroom. 24, 23 hours a day. It's not right. It's not fair. Like I said, there's all type of lawyers and other institutions going against these things, man. We just need help, or they just need help. That's all. Anyway, um, my girl T, she had some questions for me concerning some things. Like I said, so much I went through, I forgot I blocked it out. You see why I blocked it out? But I didn't give up. For real. And I'm going to say a also, bro, I, a lot of stuff I look at is being like numerous. And that's how I was able to go ahead and maybe you can make noise. We here. We, we kicking it. We kicking it. That's it. And, you know, and my guy uh, T-Rex, he over here. He, I'm calling him T-Rex because he don't want his tank name to be revealed. He, I don't know, double O eight some shit. I don't know. Nigga. <laughs> 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 I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, but I'm, I'm respecting that. And maybe when they camera ready and fr friendly, hey, we're going to make us a little coffee and cannabis movie. You know, for real. Be all type of Folgers and y'all damn it. Blueberry Kush going on. In my <laughs> anyway. Get that Max Maxwell House going. That Maxwell House. <laughs> Trent, that's okay. No, it's okay. Listen. <laughs> Listen. <coughs> T. T-Rex. God damn it. What happened with you in there, bro? Like, what? Tell us, like, some of the experiences you had, at least one. Like, give us, give us some, you know, that what people would like hear, you know, other sides, and know it isn't just me. It ain't just our race either. It's, it's, and, they going. Well, my experience was just, <clears throat> to me, it was just mind your business and you'll be fine. You're you're there to do your time, not anybody else's. Mm -hmm. You came in there by yourself. You're living by yourself. Facts. So, you know. But even with just, doing that, like, did the guards respect that all the time? No, not really. The guards didn't respect too much. Mm -hmm. You know, their guards, most of these guards are like ex-college players that have injured themselves and have nothing better to do than become corrections officers and treat mm -hmm. other people like crap because they couldn't make it in the NFL or True. they got... They got injured in college and couldn't play no more. Uh huh. And that that's that's for that's, that's been what. my experience with most of them. Yeah. A lot of them ab abuse the rules too. I've run into a, a few of them that say, "Oh, if it's not in the rule book, we don't have to do it." <laughs> and I've caught several of them yeah. violating the rule well, we book. Still, oh yeah, all the time. So I took it to their boss and. They ended up getting some nice three-day suspensions without pay for not following the rule book. See, yeah, and that's what a lot of people don't understand. We can write them people up. See, and when we was trying to write them up, like I said, the guy we writing up is going straight to him. He's the determiner of the uh, of the write-up. Yeah. Now, but if, if, if it wasn't going to him, best believe his ass would have been fried. But they, it was an intricate plot against us, but... You heard it from another guy like, yeah, hey, you put the proper paperwork in, you learn, you start reading, they can't do nothing with you, bro. Mm -hmm. Unless they lock you down and, and hold you away from the law library and other um, inmates that can help you with policies around that. Period. Well, 
like, like what, you ever got into it with officer? Uh, yeah, I've gotten into it with a few CEOs here and there <sighs> because they refuse to do their job. They're negligent in doing their mm -hmm. job. They don't want to deal with the paperwork. Mm -hmm. They just don't want to deal with shit. Yeah. All they're there to do is collect a fucking paycheck. They don't read law book log books when they come on shift. They don't do nothing. Right. You know, right. I even seen an inmate punch a CO directly in the face. Hmm. <laughs> How many times? <laughs> Once. For real. And it was enough to knock him back on his ass, All that's right. for sure. See, dude the... went to the hole, but the CO shouldn't have been touching him because dude said, Hey, don't put your hands on me. And that's what and he telling? told him like three different times and then he, and he didn't... popped him in his grill. He didn't get it. That was in Wisconsin, right? Yeah, that was at KM. Kettle Moran. Kettle Moran. He didn't. He didn't get charged either. Nope. Because the why? The officer touched him first. Yep. Normally, yeah. when you see shit like that go down, though, you're supposed to turn a blind eye. Yeah. In case you get fucking questioned. That, that is, you that is just too go. True. I don't know shit. I didn't see shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know nothing. Facts. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Because then you get labeled a snitch, and nobody All likes that. a snitch. For real. Motherfucker will be yeah. saying, oh, yeah, he was looking uh, when y'all was doing that. It you was get, him. He the one told it. it. Oh, for real. Now you ba need Basically, you're ostracized from the unit. Facts. Unless you start whooping ass around there and prove Exactly. You know what I'm then now, now you done got yourself another whole year and a half, probably, for whooping ass proving that you ain't that motherfucker that opens your mouth. And then they find the paperwork and be like, it wasn't you, fam. I get that ass, nigga. All right, man. <laughs> and straight it's up fucked up though that's the type of shit you know. that's the type of shit and as far as you know getting you acclimated to being out in the real world mm -hmm. after you've been in so long a lot of them can't really deal with it they become institutionalized and that's the only life they know facts facts so in, instead of you know trying to get help in the outside they just go commit a crime and go back to the life they knew mm, yeah the one thing I know for sure is um, it's a lot of recidivism is what they call it. And that's and the to, to, uh, to, uh, to what's her name? What the um, recidivate means to go back into that old lifestyle. Period. And that's what people do. They yeah. go, they not, and man, some of us just be like they locked into it. Like they, how could you be locked into it after five years, bro? I'm like, man, that's over with. Right. You can go back to that same environment. It's not the same, bro. It's like that motherfucking hood that flipped 30 times in five years. Exactly. I know the hood that I started, when you flipped over 100 times. You know, like, wow, nigga, that was, this, that was some crazy shit. Yeah. It was an adjustment for me when I got out because shit was flipped over after five years. A lot different. Not only that, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you you're even kind of afraid to go anywhere for a while for you know, because you're just you're just you've been in such a confined area for so long it's hard for you to adjust to being free and doing what you're able to do on right. your own without restriction right and that's one thing we didn't get in Oklahoma like our restriction bro like it was either, it was from, you know how in Kettle Moran, y'all was like, come out in the yard, maybe, maybe sit outside a little bit and all that. Yeah. It was none of that. You was either in the building over here or in the building over there. And we were considered medium status. Right. Which was, you know what I'm saying, which wasn't fair. And they got us way down there. Like I said, no visits. Our people got to, what? No. This the stuff, though. And then, well, he was in, he was in regular DLC. He's telling you about how asshole he are. They work. Now imagine being in somewhere where it's just a bunch of kids or not, you know what I'm saying, non educated, bro. Just, and I'm not saying as far as school, I'm saying as far as the system and how it works and how to run the prison. Them, the people we were around, and we were, you know what I'm saying, it was hard to just accept the bullshit that they were distributing to us. Like I say hinder and deter. That's what they did. They hindered and deterred us. Yeah. And basically, <laughs> I was told by one CEO that the system is set up for you to fail. Period. Yeah. Hmm. There's very, there's very, very small percentage of 
inmates that don't repeat, and it's a very high percentage of inmates that do repeat and end up being back in the same situation Facts. because it is set up for you to fail. Mm-hmm. You got to do it yourself, you otherwise do it yourself. <laughs> you fail. Yep. And, and you'll be back in the same situation you were going, damn, how the fuck did I get another yeah. back here? And they suppose to have like programs like for people like us when we get broke. They're not out yeah. here like that. Dude. Seriously, especially now doing this Corona stove. I mean, Corona, Corona thing, Corona, yeah. no. COVID nineteen. No, it is hard. It is hard, bro. So, especially if the guys coming home now. Hopefully, you can get somewhere where there's jobs available. Try to get into every program that may be available, but right now everything is over the phone. You know, no. money is going to dis- disappear. Everybody's going to go to like. Cards, bro. We're gonna, everything's gonna be computerized. And it's gonna be nothing that. but a microchip. It's gonna be hard to fight. You know, if you're a drug dealer, it's over. For real. You wanna do Cash App tomorrow? <laughs> What's <this laughs> <thing? laughs> hey, Cash App, me that money yeah. for that pound. You know what I'm saying? Better get that Bitcoin rolling. <laughs> get that Bitcoin going. <laughs> you got a kilo going. You know what I'm saying? Right. Anyway. See, this this what they this what they do. This what they you know what I'm saying. So I had to accommodate. It is called coffee in Canada. <sighs> anyway, but I even had the mail slowed up because as I was being transferred to a minimum, <clears throat> I got held up at one institution called Stanley, and they said it was because. I wasn't off my medication long enough. Right. And I had stopped the medication long before I was transferred, sent to transfer to a a minimum work release. Mm. Minimum work release. I wrote... Uh, Boy. I wrote the the main guy for the DOC. I never got a response because that letter was taken away. I I wrote other letters to people within the institution. There was no reply to any of that at all. You hear that? I had to keep writing the uh, program specialist at Stanley requesting that, when am I going to get the hell out of here? You hear that? When are you getting me out? When am I leaving? Hmm. No response. Did you hear that? Actually, the response, the one response I did get was they wanted to send me to a secure minimum work release. That wasn't happening. And he going home. I'm on my way to minimum work release. Period. Not secured. Regular mm. minimum. Regular minimum. Free this range is, inmate. That mean, <laughs> that mean the next step is home. That's what that means. The next step is home. Yep. So why even go take him through them type of differences? Help him even more that he can prove that he can make it to this level where he is minimum. Well, he was just a, a super max or medium criteria inmate. Go down to max, medium, showing how good his behavior, he minded his business because he wanted to do what, people? Go home. Exactly. Not Go be no goofy. Home. Go home. Straight up. And that's all we, uh, that's all we want to do. Straight up. At the end of the day. But they got this thing called hinder and deter. And we can't <laughs> we can't get past that word up in there. But look what they did to us concerning our lives. And then I got a son that's in prison right now with 15 years. Got a grandbaby I never seen. Yeah. Got out my daughter way grown. I mean, you missed out on all that, bro. Like, that stuff, this valuable stuff. That's valuable. That's valuable. Damn, I'm going to get my money. I'm going to find a way. This is the valuable stuff, bro. Mama time. Mama cooking. You know what I'm saying? Auntie, uncles. Laughing with your nephews and nieces and cousins. That stuff. That stuff will matter. Damn, going to a club and... You know what I'm saying? Meeting up with the guys and y'all end up getting to it. A shootout over some stupid. Nah, that ain't what be on your mind in there if you want if you really want to come home. 
you, if you focus on home, you focus on the people at home. You know, unless your guys are your friends and your brothers. Y'all focus on the good time. You think about your memories of your guys, your dead homies, you don't think about that time you went to shuttle. No, you think about the time y'all was laughing and being goofy. The time y'all ate together. The time y'all was struggling to find out the way to eat together. You know, it's always, you know, the happy moments. Not, that's what we missed out on, bro. That's what, that's what hurt me the most. Period. Especially with my children. <laughs> Especially with my children. Yeah. It makes it hard to love. Or it makes it hard for me to... Man, it's hard for me to accept love. Like People, people say that shit, you be like, okay. And you try to hopefully respond. PTSD. For real. PTSD. Anyway, uh, WT had a question from me, or a few questions, and I was just waiting on her to get her little smiley face ready. She didn't want to hear, you know, she didn't want her voice being heard. That's just, that's too shy. On the real. And she's just going to stand. <laughs> she's just going to... You'll know, you'll get that look. Hey, I got that look. Mm-hmm. Okay, I have a question that's from a young lady in Wisconsin. Yeah. She asks, how did you, how did it help you in all aspects of being a better person once you were released, considering the programs they offer would not be able to help you in the real world due to being a felon? That is a, that is a good question. Yeah, that is. It is. And she said in the beginning, what? Like, what was... She asked, how would the how did the programs help you? In what ways, considering the ones they offered to give you an associate's degree or so on, but you cannot use it in the real world because you are a felon? Oh. It kept you on a positive being in there in school, mm -hmm. but how could it help you once you're released? Once I'm released. Well, once you had that trade, you know, you basically get it implanted in your mind on what to do. That's with any school, you know what I'm saying? We just have more time to study. So the fact that when we can't get a job for that trade, that's the confusing part about it. You got engineers out here with no jobs. Right. Facts. But uh, I know for a fact that companies that do hire felons get about a hundred thousand dollar a year tax break yeah. for hiring felons. And that's 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 the benefit that and that the benefits the company. Yeah, it's a tax break for them. But also, it's, it's places like Minnesota. I'm gonna be honest. Do you get a part of that money? You get like 25% of that money in Minnesota. Yes, you do. Okay, I, in Minnesota. If you're yeah, in Wisconsin, I'm, 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 oh, just, hell the fuck no. Is this motherfucker listening? <laughs> nope. Then I just say in Minnesota, <laughs> initially. I said in Minnesota. Right, okay. I say Wisconsin. He want to say no, no. <laughs> Motherfucking yes. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it did. It, it, it benefited me because it helped me broaden my knowledge and my wisdom. Even if I didn't get no job. I still got it up here and I can utilize it in other ways concerning my life and how I move and shape, you know? I got it up here and when I put a resume out there, it looked on the resume. And then it's not no lie. So when they call me in for it, eventually, hopefully one day, I got it. So it's a plus. Plus it took time away for me in there to be doing nothing. So I might as well do something to, you know, um, to up, what's that, upgrade? Uh, uh, upgrade my, uh, like I said, my, my thought process. You know, my, uh, my way of thinking. You know, it, time does a lot. I just feel like I didn't need that much time. I got it after the first couple years, man. I was done. It's the extra. Yeah. Well, yeah, thanks. Thanks. For asking that question. Okay, I have another question from a gentleman in Florida. Mm -hmm. Have you seen people attempt a suicide or succeeded in the attempt of suicide? Yep. Yes, I have. 
I actually had to help somebody. He made it there just in time. Not no hero or nothing. It's the fact you walk past the cell and you see somebody doing that. For real. It's, 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 it's got to be natural instinct. Like, hold on, man. You can't. You can't. You can't do that. For real. But I know some people who have walked past cells. And then this the fucked up part. Got us walking past them. For real. One dude, his cellie told him, I'm finna kill myself, bro, could you give me a little time? Okay. Put the curtain over the window. You know, we gotta take a shit sometimes. You know, they let you cover the window up, my nigga, you know? <clears throat> so we think he up there taking one of the major ones, you know, like me. I, you know, I go in the bathroom, be in there for a minute. This dude was in there, goddamn it, from count till count. Nobody checking. Like he keeps saying, Sully keeps saying he's taking the shit. The whole time you know this dude here killed himself. Over there. They do count. Come through. Bro didn't touch him. He's just sitting there reading the motherfucking book with dude TV on. Tell him he wanted to do it. Crazy, bro. The only reason he didn't get that case. Because they seen him on the camera come out and start playing cards. And they seen the celly throw the curtain over the thing. Now, if he'd have threw it over that motherfucker or something before he walked out. Oh, it'd have been, yeah, hip-hop lyrics. A rap for him. Facts. But he was just, he was a, he was a, he was a punk for that, to me. To do that. Yeah, so, yeah. I seen it before. I seen it in the hole. For real. I, I, I'm going to say it's suicide. But it's funny. It was these... It's three men. Two men fighting over one man. So somehow they we in the I told you I work in the hole, bro. So they arguing back and forth, like, man, that's my bitch, ooh, that's my bitch, ooh. This the other one in the middle, he's just he's just feeling like I got damn it, you know what I'm saying? He's in prison. So he literally has a bag full of dicks. Anyway, they get the fight on the top tier. I'm down there mopping. I'm like, wow, they really... Okay, man. You know what I'm saying? Dude still on dude. Through the... T, he's still on through the... <laughs> Up through the bar? The, not through the bar. You know, the, the motherfucking... The, the, the food slot. Oh, the food slot. <laughs> he still on through the food slot, fam. So, dude... I swear the police opened up the door because the we ain't a hole. You can only pop the door. The door pops. They come out. Now they fight. The food slots down because it's lunchtime. Dude and them get the rumbling, tussling. One uh, fall, but as he fall, he caught him good. I ain't gonna lie. He caught him as he was falling. Bam! But his head hit the back of the motherfucking slot, bro. Over with. He died right there. For real, the blood came down like he was pouring out water. Remember, I gotta clean this shit up. It came out like that. Dude and do nothing but try to get in the other motherfucking share who they was fighting on. Literally. So, yeah. That's the suicide to me, mommy. He's fighting over another man. Have yeah. you yourself ever attempted suicide? Yep. When I first got in there, I ain't gonna on, 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 on some whole ass nigga shit, nigga, like, fuck that nigga. I'm, I'm finna get out of here some type of way. But I really wanted to do it. You know? No. I swear. I convinced the chief psychologist yeah. to fucking send me to the resource center. See, <laughs> that's what I was calling myself trying to do. <laughs> but I was really depressed, bro. A lot of people don't know that. Bam. Both wrists. Both of them. My celly called me. On everything. He said, man, celly, what is... I, I just got in there. I ain't gonna lie, I was in Dodge. It's, it, it, it's, it's documented. And it's in Dodge. For real. They said 15 years, and I said, it's over. You know, when you're young, you be like, man, I was young, man. I'm like, hey, what, 18? It's like, oh, that's life. I told the psychologist I was going to walk out the front gate. <laughs> see, no, see that, I told them that I'm trying to get to the pearly gates. And they believe, they believe when you say that shit. They really do. Put you ass naked in the room, concrete slab, tied down. Motherfucking temperature in the room gotta be at what 65 to 68 in one of them rooms. Yeah. So now you ass naked in there, using goddamn it. Hopefully, you know what I'm saying. Uh, the roll of tissue for a pillow. That's for evaluation. Three days. After three days of nakedness, they give you a paper gown. 
you don't get no red. You get like a gown that you cannot use to tie up and hang on no motherfucking thing. So you can, goddamn it, you know what I'm saying? Try it again. So now you, what you doing with that? You taking that off, balling that up. And, Hopefully keep the, the top half on to stay warm and just have the whole bottom half, you know, it's exposed and use that with the tissue. And now you got uh, extra, you know what I'm saying, firmness on your pillow or whatever. I don't want to go through that. So I said, like, nah, after this, I didn't even want to see what the other days was like. Give me that shit. Yeah, I'm sorry. You put me back in population. I'm going to be a man. That was it. Ain't no killing yourself. I, I prayed. I always pray. Now, every time I pray, bam. Lord said, come on. I read this one white lady felt sorry for me. I swear she worked and died. When she watched it, she she remembered. She 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 was like, he don't belong in here. Showing he don't belong in here. In prison. For real. What the fuck? They look at the paperwork and be like, what the fuck? Okay. And something break it down for y'all one day on that line. None of us, me and my brothers, we must supposed to went to prison, bro. The same as them guys in New York. The same shit. For real, we was kids, and they and they they fucked us. I just thank God that none of them went through what I went through, cause I was the only one. Cause maybe I was, I guess I was the only the strong one. I made it, and I am not mad. <clears throat> I am not. Period. This last question for the day comes from a a guy from Gary, Indiana. Mm -hmm. If this is for both of you men, if or when your prison. I'm excuse me. If or when have your prison ever went on a hunger strike? How long did it last? Mm. You went on a hunger strike? No. Y'all ever did? No, we never went on no I remember, strike. um, no, I'm not Kettle Moran. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. Kettle Moran in Wisconsin, the prison there? Yeah. They eat good. They was eating good. They was, <laughs> even they visits, they was getting real fried fish and stuff like that. On yeah, yeah, as far as unit foods, yeah. bullshit. <laughs> hey, it's what, hey, I kind of heard different. I didn't, but have, I don't know. I didn't I have know. real good food till I got to Gordon, Wisconsin. See, then it was on. Then it was on. Fuck yeah, fresh, See, fresh vegetables, fruit, fucking real hamburger, <laughs> real pork chop, right? Fucking everything it was all good. My man. He, I'm gonna tell y'all about my, my dude T right here. You know, he dealing with medical issues and everything. And you know, aneurysm. And now to me, he he's he's like a healthy guy. So the reason I tell y'all to like go and look into things with people, you never know what they can be putting in our food, bro. And what making you no know, can make it may attack us later. You know what I'm saying? So just, I want y'all to keep that in mind for, for us. So not feel sorry. None of that. Just, man. <laughs> know that them people in them prisons are still human beings. That's all. There's some of them in there for drugs, bro, that we didn't, bro, I'm glad shows like Snowfall coming out. They're telling the truth. Shows like uh, BMF, okay, telling the truth, you know? Remember, they used to shit on rap real bad, bro. Facts, they weren't doing nothing but telling the truth. They weren't no gangster rap, it was reality rap. That's what was going on in our neighborhoods and communities. Police whooping our ass. Gay niggas out here gang, baby. People selling drugs. It's, it's chaos in this motherfucker. All of a sudden, yeah, that's gangster rap. Yeah, you should be talking about that stuff. Why? Who else gonna say the story? Who else gonna tell the story? Don't listen to come over and tell the story you don't tell y'all part and then get out of there. But we can tell you the nitty gritty. Oh, it's an issue. It's a problem. Come on now. No. 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 I mean, man. One thing I want to do right now is thank Lady T and, and my dude T Rex for helping me out today. Because I really. I don't really know where to begin. Thanks for having me this morning. Yeah, it's all good. Thank me. you for having me. For sure. It's the only thing we we all out here to do, you know what I'm saying? This is just make people aware. Not save anybody. Like, hey, my dude Charles and White said, he said, man, I ain't trying to save a damn. 
Just trying to equip people, bro. The information is out there. Go gather it. Utilize it. And um, let's just have your eyes open up. You know, because a lot of people ain't knowledge to, you know what I'm to what's going on. So you can't have wisdom on something you have no knowledge of. That is just the truth. Facts. Um, I was gonna have my brother show up here, but maybe one day he'll, he'll come and be able to share his list, you know, his story. Yeah, lot like they want me to do this alone because I guess my story is like. Magnified, and I'm good at telling them. I'm not a talk, my boy. Straight up, that's all. For real, it's a, a way to get people to listen. I'm not here to disunify anything. I'm here to make sure we all just unify and get a better perspective on what's going on around us. That's all. So we can, you know what I'm saying, see what we can do about it. May not, may not be able to fix everything, but at least bring some things to light that can be fixed, that can be looked into and, and corrected. That's it. That is it. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know my saying, too, man. Y'all know it. What? Love first, peace later. That's what we're about to do today. I'm finna finish up my coffee. <laughs> and my cannabis. <laughs> Gary passed his big old joint over to my dude T Rex. <laughs> I'm trying not to say his real name, you know what I'm saying? At all. And got my girl over here looking crazy. I don't know what for. Well, y'all, y'all hear, y'all hear some sirens. You just y'all, trying to bring that look out, ain't you? Yeah, y'all hear some sirens. <laughs> I know you've heard the saying, "Don't poke the fucking bear, dude." <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> Love first, peace later. God damn it. For real, all the time. Mm. What up? Check it out. Hold this. We gotta get up out of here. What's going on? Gene and I help over here. What? Come on, let's ride. When you hear we come in, this sounds like we're stomping on landmines. Handling, we function straight up, dumping, we mankind. When Buster is a man chronic hating, he transpired. He comes with Calico, Desert Eagle, 44 and 9. Crown leaning to the right of my skull as I stroll it. We cross ways and decide to pistol play, it'll be known. This thing that they call it a game is mostly pain. It's conducive, man, you know that there's no points to be made. Just the dustings and some deadly concussions. When you a grow, best keep blow, box your back, you and you best to keep busting. Cause the that. opposing team then come to lose nothing. I main purpose and goal is to oh. Just a little respect from you busters Cause we gon' play where we wants to play And ball where we wants to ball If they get the same that we can't Then fuck all them all And matter of fact, fuck they mamas too Cause the bitch is down for you Whether you right or wrong Cause that's the things that mamas do but I can't blame her for the sins of her baby I just hope that she's praying for him When I send him to Hades With this young creative close to his temple Next to his side Baka, baka, my guy, bye bye If you look into my eyes You see me inside You see me behind that door See me in